welcome, dear viewer, for our program, uh, The Riser. I was speaking to you is uh, Pastor Oscar Cambona. And the topic of uh, our sharing this morning is entitled Fear Not. Uh, Fear Not. And before we proceed, shall we believe and pray? Our Father, in Jesus' name, speak unto us of the stillness of thy voice that men and women who believe and trust in you may never be afraid. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, fear not is uh, a burden that the Lord gave me to share with you at this particular moment. And um, I think the Lord chose this topic for our sharing this morning because in our daily lives we have a lot of stuff uh, that could be working against us. We, there could be things we are chasing and we're not able to catch them. Our schedule could be ahead of where we are. The things that could not, um, perhaps are not really adding up according to our expectation. And probably people are being tortured by the ongoing event to the left and to the right. And uh, much of the time could have been given to how good or how well their opponents are doing. I want us to look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 11, and it is going to give us one little secret of why people fear. Verse 11, 1 Samuel 17, the scripture says that when Saul and all Israel had these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and uh, greatly afraid. Now, this Philistine was their opponent. The Philistine Goliath was their enemy. And the scripture says that when Saul, Saul was the king, and uh, all Israel, and the scripture talks here of uh, the army, the army that were with Saul, as the battle was um, aligned, uh, at, uh, the battle was put in array. And um, whatever brought fear, the scripture says clearly that fear came when Saul and all Israel had of the enemy. Now, when we hear of the enemy, or when we push our ears towards the enemy than towards the mouth of God, fear comes. One of the ways in which men pull themselves down is keeping their ears from the mouth of God. And mouth of God here, I mean the word of God. When the word of God be in us, yeah, fear will be far from us because what we hear has power, has much power over how we feel, you know. So the scripture says that, and when Saul and Israel heard those words, they felt dismayed and they were greatly, greatly afraid. So what do you let yourself hear? I think I, I want to uh, address that first before I talk of fear not. Because it's based on that which you feed yourself, that which you let in you, that which you, know, you let yourself uh, gather. Those information are the ones that put fear. And if the information that you're getting is not one from the Lord, what does it bring? Fear. Saul and the army of Israel were greatly afraid when they heard of the enemy. So I'm looking at fear as one of the things that come our way when we look more into the enemy than we look unto our deliverer. Of, often, uh, or what I believe is that when we look on to the enemy, when you look at the enemy, fear comes outside. But when we look at our deliverer, fear goes to our enemy. So it's the, the, fear, the fear factor now kills our enemy. Because when you look unto him that delivers, him that lifts people up, him that shields men, then we can never, we can never be afraid. Now I've always learned that in life fear comes. When we look uh, into what the future holds, then we look unto him who holds our future. God holds every future. And when you, when you look at what the future may hold for you, in whatever situation you are in, it could be in 
you are you're cycling bad you could, you could be bedridden you could be struggling with some medical condition and for a very long time now if you look into uh, maybe what the future may hold from the situation you are in right now you could be doing uh, so poorly financially uh, you down with your bills but if you look into the future in line with where you are if you don't look into god if if your eyes are ever on the, your enemy side, the scripture says, fear God to King Saul and, and all the Israelites and the, the entire army. So most of us put fear in, in ourselves uh, even if before the enemy comes to attack us. Because the moment you fall from what God says, fear comes, regardless of whether the enemy is around or not. So one of the greatest challenges uh, that uh, we have to walk out of is the challenge of keeping far from what God says. Because even if the f enemy may not be close enough to harm you, if you far from what God says, fear attacks. And, and fear is such a thing uh, that is uh, it's not a good spirit. The scripture talks of, uh, fa uh, sorry, First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, and of power and of sound mind. So the spirit of fear is not from the Lord. The spirit of fear is from the enemy. And I've known one thing about fear, that fear has power to finish you, even before you put you, you, your strength into use. What would make Saul and the entire army to shiver and, and, and even run away from Goliath was fear. They never happened to try fighting him. Fear people, I, I, I love it from when I was growing up, I was reading from acronyms. And the word fear used to mean those days, F stood for false, S stood for, um, sorry, E stood for evidence, A appearing are real. So as I was growing up, I used to know that fear, from that acronym, uh, play part of it, I used to see fear as false evidence appearing real. It's false, and actually I would say fear is false. Because fear just come, comes your way and tells you, oh, your enemy is going to finish you. Don't even try anything here. No, get your way out, no. You finished, you any, don't joke with this man. Don't joke with this situation. Look, this medical condition has put many people down. Don't joke with this disease, man. Be careful. And then we have some who speak that way in our ears when we're battling various si situations, when we're going through various challenges. They are not coming your way to cheer you up. They're coming, they're coming to ask you, uh, Eliab asked his brother David, what are you doing here? In the battlefield, you're such a small boy. What are you going to do here? There are some people who think you're not going to you know, walk out of your situation um, uh, successfully. It's not going to happen for you. I want to say, fear is not from the Lord. God can never put us in, in us a spirit that makes us feel defeated, feel devastated, feel we're going to be destroyed, we're going to be losers, we're not going anywhere. That's not spirit from the Lord. So the moment we be, we are far from what God says, the moment your ears are far from the mouth of God, hey, the room that is left there is for the multiplication of this demon that brings fear. So the scripture talks of fear not. I love the scriptures uh, and the encouragement I get in, in, in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you here. Yeah? I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When you fear, you like telling God, God, your presence doesn't uh, make any difference. Things are the same with or without you. Yeah? When you fear, you're telling God, God, my enemy is bigger than you. The, sh the, 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 the sword my enemy is having is bigger than your shield over me. So we told not to fear. Fear not. When, when you fear, you're giving the enemy opportunity to excel and to multiply and to be strong and to yell over you, to keep you down. When you fear, you know, some of the people who lose in life lose more because of fear than because of their opponent. Because the moment you let fear in your life. You add strength to your opponent. You, your open feels encouraged. So the scripture talks of fear not. And 
my uh, burden this morning is to bring this as the word of God and let it speak unto us. And we ought to know that we are never to be afraid whatsoever the situation. Let us not let fear come our way. And the only way to do that successfully is to keep on the Lord's side. Keep listening to God. Don't, don't go hearing what the enemy is saying. Saul and the Israel and the armies of Israel, have they heard, they heard Goliath bellowing and, and mocking and ask the, asking them, if you be man, give me one man we fight. After they heard that, they were finished. The only thing left for them was to take off. Fear not. So it's a blessed um, message that the Lord has for us. And I was thinking that a more needed vaccine, a more needed vaccine than that against the, the COVID-19 is, is a vaccine that will make men immune to fear. And this vaccine is the word of God. The word of God. Saul and the armies of Israel were afraid because they heard of the enemy. They didn't hear of the Lord. If you don't hear the, of the Lord, you will never be afraid. God is speaking unto his children. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. But if you listen to the enemy, if your eyes are on the enemy, of how big your enemy is, how lordly they are, how great they have been, how, how the history of that disease is so terrifying. If you listen into, to, to the history of your enemy, we have many people who even succumb to situations they could recover from, but it is the fear that finished them. Everyone tells them, no, you're not going to survive this. Remember so and so, he succumbed to the same situation. Remember so and so, he, he, didn't, he didn't make it. And so you feel your story is going to be like their story. You feel like the presence of God cannot change your story. Fear not. More needed vaccine. If I would uh, be having opportunity to make a vaccine for men, I would make one that make men immune to fear. And so I've learned that in life fear comes when we look into what the future holds. Then we look unto him who holds our future. Fear comes when, when you're looking into what the future holds. What situation you're going to be tomorrow. More than you look unto him who can change every, every history. So let's look unto him who holds our future. That's what faith is. Faith doesn't mean knowing what the future holds. Faith means knowing him who holds the future. If you know him, if you keep on his side, if, if you trust on him, if you always push your ears close to his mouth, it's going to be well with them that trust in the Lord. At no time are they going to be afraid. Fear will not be their portion. In the book of Gospel Workers, on page 66 and paragraph 1, Ellen White says that God has provided a divine assistance for all the emergencies to which our human resources are unequal. God has provided a divine assistance for all the emergencies to which our human resources are unequal. Gospel workers, page 66 and paragraph 1. That's amazing that can give hope. It gives hope. It's an encouragement to me. I pray that you, you, you grab it for your own good. Because if we look at our, uh, our, the inequality between us and our enemy, the inequality between us and the situation we're going through, inequality between us and our opponent, if, you, if, if, if your eyes focus on that, that's what will bring fear. You start telling yourself, but I'm not as big as the enemy is. But I've never succeeded as the, uh, my opponent has, success, has succeeded before. But my, my opponent has a history. Fear not, no. Ellen White also speaks this in one of her writings that we have nothing to fear for. We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget how the Lord has led us in the past and his teachings in our past history. We have nothing to fear for, except as we shall forget how the Lord has led us in the past and his teachings in our past history. And that's why. David gets to the battlefield and he tells the king that one time I was in, in the wilderness taking care of 
the, the, the sheep. Then a lion came and attacked the flock. Yeah? And I went. And what happens? At the end of it all, I saw my hand on his beard tearing it apart and it died. David is in connection with what God has done for him in the past. This is where we get our confidence. When you just refuse to forget what God has done for you. Because sometimes the enemy just wants to keep you down by forgetting how far God has taken you. This far, we say Ebenezer, this far it has been the hand of the Lord. If you forget that the hand of the Lord has been you way, has been with you, then surely fear is going to come your side. Fear not. This is the message of the Lord. Fear can finish you even before your strength is over. Fear. That's what fear does. The, the Saul and the Israelites would feel afraid and they would flee. Even before putting their little strength into use, fear, fear squashes you, you know, grinds you over, grinds you into part and blows you for doom. Fear not. And for us to fear not, we must have our, our mind, our focus on the Lord, in the word of God. God has given us much and much and much to encourage us. In the holy uh, book, in his word, we have a lot to depend on that will keep us strong. So whether we don't have what other people have, that's not a reason for us to fear. Whether we don't have the healing we're still, we're still looking for, whether it's not, we are not having that breakthrough, our focus should be in the person in whose hands we are. We shouldn't be looking at how big the hand of the opponent is, how big the hand of, of this monster standing against us is. We should always focus on our deliverer. So most people who fear have their eyes fixed on their devourer, not their opponent, their enemy, and not in the deliverer. Fear. Fear not. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this text and uh, I'm, I'm in a special way feeling uh, that it's a moment that those who trust in the Lord should believe that God himself will provide a way out. Let's read together the book of Psalm and chapter 34. Psalms chapter 34 and, and verse 4. 34, 4, Psalm says that I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. When we seek him, the Lord, he delivers us from all our fears. So we only need to be looking for God. If, you, if you're busy looking for God in your life, you never come across a path called Mr. Fear. It never comes. The closer you keep to God, the far the fear moves from you. Because fear is just uh, that blackmail that the, God, uh, the devil brings you away, telling you, no, God is not going to protect you over here. Uh, the devil brings the black blackmail of, no, I think what matters here is the size and the experience. It's not keeping on the Lord's side. And, and that will make many afraid if they keep on the Lord's side now. I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, the life of Goliath. Look at how long Goliath lived in the battlefield. He didn't last, he didn't last in the battlefield. The things that make us fear will never last. One thing I know about them, they will never last. The things that make us feel afraid are never eternal. And because they don't last, they also don't want you to last. Someday, we in the Lord shall overcome all. And by faith, we overcome now. We have two portions, both now and someday when Christ shall return. We, we conquer us. We, and our fear, like I said, our fear does depend even on, on our size or our, our muscle, our might, our capacity. 
Our fear only depends on how much we keep our mind on the enemy side. How much we keep our mind far from the Lord side. So let's keep our mind closer to God. Every moment let's search him. Let's speak unto him. Let's invite him in our lives. Let's ask him you know, to take care and control of our situation. Our situation, our life is not our hands. The situations we are going through could be beyond our hands to control, our power to control. But they are not beyond what God has done in the past, is now doing and will do. So let's keep firm and steadfast on the Lord's side. Even if it means uh, that the enemy or the situation is threatening to take light, life out of you. Never fear. Even if it is a matter of life and death, never fear. You, you'd, rather know, you'd rather die on the Lord's side than to let fear kill you. Trusting the Lord. I don't believe that in my life, my, my, fear, my fear is not even that someday these things that threaten life will catch up with me. Or these things that threaten life will finally put me down. Even if it's a matter of death, my fear is not that someday death will come. My confidence is that a life given to Jesus Christ will never be lost. A, li a life lived on the Lord's side, a life lived with confidence in the Lord, will never be lost. So regardless of what happens, friends, let us keep firm. Let's keep standing. Let's keep on the Lord's side. God makes it clear, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am God. But if you walk out of the presence of God, like I said, if you walk out, fear not, for I am with you. Fear comes when you walk out of the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, you're not going to be strong. Let none deceive you. No, let none tell you you're a man enough. If you walk out of the presence of the Lord, fear. The first enemy you meet is Mr. Fear. So let's keep in the presence of the Lord. That's why he says, fear not, for I am with you. I know he never leaves us. It's us who leave him. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Today, fear kills more than the enemy does. Many have succumbed to fear. Sometimes the enemy is, is just having a sweet surprise of victory after victory. Surprise that he didn't know he would have. Victory he didn't know he would have. Because we have let the fear come to slaughter us. And uh, just as uh, Saul and did, I want to make this to be part of our encouragement. If fear comes, look for men on the Lord's side. When Saul and the army now meet the little boy David, whether as little as David, look for the men on the Lord's side. Sometimes don't let fear uh, finish you. You may have gone through a situation or a kind of living that has eroded all the walls God built to protect you. Look for the servants of God. Ask them to help you in this battle. You praying together, having a fellowship. The presence of David signifies what happens when you fellowship together, one to, to another. In the battlefield, we will be overcomers. Don't fear men who despise you. The Goliaths in your life, they won't live long. And even if you are a man who despises other people, like it was with uh, Goliath, you don't have long to live. Men who despise you are not people to be feared. They don't have a life to live for long. So my brothers and sisters, this morning, I'm, I'm, my prayer is that we would keep on the Lord's side and fear not. Let's have our ears close to his mouth. Let's always hear of him. Let's not listen to the enemy. Listen to the enemy really finishes, crumbles us, destroys. Listen to the enemy pulls down the walls that God built to protect us. Pulls down the walls of confidence. Grabs the victory that God had long put in our hands. Takes it to the enemy. May this be a blessing to you this morning. And uh, in our daily endeavors, let us keep 
closer to the Lord, closer than even before. And that's a way we can beat and fight fear. Shall we believe and pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this message. We desire that we be not of the spirit of fear, but of the spirit of power and love and of sound mind. We fear not, and Lord, we pray that you take control even of our um, faculties of learning and receiving information. We don't want to hear of the enemy, we want to hear your word. Because when Saul and the men of Israel heard of Goliath, they became afraid. We pray that our focus may be on you. We, we may only see you. We may look unto the del deliverer, but we look unto our devourer. This, Lord, is our humble prayer that we have submitted, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen.